The oldest man I ever knew was also the most cynical man I've ever known. And when he was 95 years old, Les Radley said to me, I don't like New York City, but it's my favorite place to get lost in. If you take out the words New York City from Radley's comment and put instead the word consciousness, Radley's statement still makes perfect sense. In my own study of New York City, I would say that I get more lost. And being lost is a really beautiful feeling here in New York City. Because to be lost in the big city is to actually be quite precise about your place in the universe. My cousin Bruce watched September 11th occur with his own eyes on a rooftop on Avenue B in the East Village. He said that when the towers collapsed, he realized most of all that the vastness of the sky had been that much more exposed and that the towers had re-emerged, reunited with the infinitude that is the sky above us every day. The World Trade Centers did not die. They created more space. And we may be lost, but that's because that disorientation is life. We are standing on the action-packed landmark known as Wall Street. Uh, originally a wall built by the Dutch in the 1620s as a fortress. Uh, the Dutch, facing an unlabeled continent and boundless possibilities, erect a wall. And people do have a tendency to build walls in the face of boundlessness. When I tell you that that's George Washington, as sculpted by John Quincy Ward, taking the oath of office, this will open up an entire floodgate deluge of ideas and principles and history and ideology and persona. Close off that floodgate for a moment. Look out at that statue, then close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And when you open your eyes, let's agree that that's not George Washington. That is just a human being, a man, a soul. He's wearing 18th century regalia. He has good posture. Uh, he's almost smiling. And he appears to be holding out his hand. He appears to be waiting for someone to hold his hand. The statue, for me, has clearly just become a declaration of the American need for intimacy. And it has rendered this entire Wall Street simply a parable telling the tale of how much George Washington needs his hand held. Alexander Hamilton, founder of the First Bank of New York, Secretary of the Treasury on George Washington's cabinet, co-writer of the Federalist Papers, a founding father of the United States of America, embedded in the soil of the financial district, a neighborhood that is as a living personification of one of Hamilton's thoughts when he was alone and feeling ambitious. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. If you promote contest, contest will be your undoing. Living proof, Alexander Hamilton's life. Killed in a pistol duel by his arch competitor and rival, Aaron Burr, in Weehawken, New Jersey in 1804. Only a month earlier, Hamilton had written an op-ed piece to the local paper decrying pistol duels. In that moment of self-contradiction, as Hamilton was finishing and dotting the I's to that essay, he could barely hear his angels singing out to him that competition is merely vague togetherness, meek intimacy. And maybe as he sent that essay off in the newly invented mail system, he noted that he had helped unify a union with a mediocre definition of unity. And as his blood ran the course out of his body, bleeding to death in Greenwich Village, the blood ran the true course of competition's resolution. And maybe in that moment, Hamilton could see America's contest 
ending the same way his contest had. Hamilton was right about a lot of things, though. America is mercantile, totally embedded in the Industrial Revolution, and proof that he was right about so many constitutional legislative points. His tombstone today lies directly across the street from a shoe outlet. One of the central altars of the New York City Financial District, the New York Stock Exchange, has a small buttonwood tree sapling in front of it. Because according to Wall Street history, the very first transaction that happened on Wall Street took place underneath a buttonwood tree. The transaction, the mythological gesture that gives birth to New York City, uh, is actually an opportunity for two people to feel like they're taking, so no one has to feel like they're giving. And to be profitable in this society is to be good at not giving. Uh, transaction emanates from our need that we have for each other and our fear that we have of each other. Uh, these are also the two central ingredients of New York City. Uh, when I'm handing a dollar bill to make a purchase, I am necessarily entering someone's personal space, which is a secret dream of mine, uh, as every citizen of every city I've ever met certainly needs a hug. Uh, at the same time, by handing a dollar bill, I am keeping this person at an arm's length. So I am entering the personal space of another for constructive and profitable reasons, not because it's a nightclub that I'm enjoying in any way, and I'm keeping that person at arm's length at all times. At times, however, truly crafting a moment together, although almost inadvertently and as anonymously as possible. What a transaction really is, is mediocre human intercourse and bad sex. It's the bad sex happening all over the city every day. There is so much of it, uh, I have trouble sleeping at night. The bad sex, I mean. And so the buttonwood tree is dwarfed by the New York Stock Exchange facade, a clear art installation and demonstration, a complicated joke spun by this complicated comedian, New York City, to show us how much larger our illusions are than our true nature.